Hey there! Today we're going to talk about this ink. Akamon Chinatown Red. Um, usually I don't really go into the bottles of these inks, adjusting the hat a little bit, uh, because you know often I think these bottles are not particularly spectacular. They may work, but you know, that's all there's to it. These bottles are a phenomenon in themselves, and um, Akamon is a fountain pen shop in the Netherlands. There's one in The Hague and one in Amsterdam, and these bottles are from The Hague branch of the, the shop. Um, Chinatown Red, it's displayed on there, not sure whether you can read that, but it's there. And of course, these are very fascinating bottles. Now, what is so fascinating about them? Well, I'll make sure the cap is really in place here. Uh, what you may see is this. You've got this wide cauldron here, and then you have the neck, and in the neck there is a marble and the marble can actually move. Now what you do is notice that the neck of the bottle is, is clear, and you turn the bottle around, you turn it up again, and the marble makes sure that ink gets trapped in the neck of the bottle. And that way you can, I usually let out just a little bit, you can open up the bottle, as you can see this part is now free of ink, uh, you dip your pen in, You've got a nice reservoir of ink there, which is trapped. Fill up your pen. No mess, no fuss, no hassles, nothing. Fill up the bottle again. Make sure that the ink is trapped. You can just flow back. I don't think that's absolutely necessary, but I always do it. And then, you know, in the course of a few days, the neck will turn completely clear again because the ink slowly drips down. I think that is pretty awesome. And these are 150 milliliter bottles of ink. So you get a lot of ink. Um, I got some Chinatown Red. I thought that would be an interesting color. Uh, I was right, I think. It's a very nice, vibrant red, very uh, quite intense, I would say. Um, looks something like this, so it's, it's a little like blood. Um, and, and that's all there's to it. So I know this will not be the most available ink for a lot of you. Uh, because I don't think every one of you lives in the Netherlands. Uh, you can order this stuff online. Akamon is the only shop that, that sells these, these ink bottles. Um, they have what I consider to be fair international shipping. These are glass bottles, they're heavy, so you will pay for shipping and it will not be two euros. But you'll get one of these nice bottles and of course once it runs dry you can just put your favorite ink in there and you have a fantastic way to you know store it. I mean putting this in your desk is is quite impressive I think it's it's nicer than some other bottles um, so it's it's nice and of course in the end it's about the ink and the ink I think is very okay it's it's the bottle is awesome but the ink is definitely usable and okay now I only have one color you know I gave Dan and Eric a bottle um, and those are different colors I've only heard positive stuff about those so I'm assuming you know it's it's safe to say that this is pretty nice ink so that's all there's to it I think you now need to see the ink in action, and uh, let's go to that. So we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, here we go with... Ackermann. Note the English pronunciation. It is Ackermann in Dutch. Note the nice R. Chinatown Red <clears throat> I'll start with some fine writing The Quick Brown Fox Went to Chinatown Um, just adjust the lighting a little bit. What you what you see here right now is a fairly light red. Uh, I think that with a medium nib it's going to pick up a little. It's a pretty bright red. Uh, 
so far I have had no problems with flow of this ink. Um, it, it seems to work very well, it works in a number of pens. Uh, I often have the feeling that reds can be a little bit more difficult to clean uh, than other inks. Um, that is definitely noticeable with uh, Gerbain 1670, the, the Hematite uh, version. Um, but of course that has a very interesting structure. Uh, I think this ink is, is well fairly well behaved uh, in cleaning. And then finally we have an italic Okay, so let's have a look at some really broad saturated stuff. I'll start with one pass. When these are dry, I'll do a second and here, third pass. There we go. As you can see, a nice bright red. This this really is, you know, when I think of, of Chinatown, this is the, 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 the color that's evoked in my mind's eye. Alright, let's do a little bit of flex writing. Chinatown. You'll probably see it's it's a bit darker now, and a bit of a darker red. Uh, it lays down a lot of ink, and that's what what happens. I must say I prefer the light red, so sort of this color. But you know when you flex it, it just gets darker. More ink, more saturation. Still, I think it's a very fascinating color. Uh, there definitely is shading going on. This is not a color in which I think you, you see that very well, uh, but it's, it's definitely there. Try to push this nib a bit. I'll do broad and then I think our lines have been dried up enough to come back to those. That's a lot of ink. It's dry. It's not entirely dry in that spot, but I'll cheat a little bit just to save some time here. There we go. It was pretty much dry, so that shouldn't be a big difference. Let's do a second pass. And then I'll come back here for a third pass. Reasonably wet ink. This is still wet. Um, I enjoy that. Uh, I, I like a, a good wet ink. But that's not for everyone. You know, when you're on the road.
Right, let's have a look at some fat writing. We should probably do an R. Something like that. Uh, cap, here we go. And a little bit of regular writing. I'll use a medium nib. Some people have been asking me about the sheet of plastic I use. Uh, that really has one purpose, and that is to make sure that oils from my hand don't actually, uh, you know, not, are not rubbed into the paper. And that can really hamper ink flow. And clearly, in, in videos like these, I really want to show off the ink and really want it to um, do the ink justice. And if a pen would skip just because I, I smeared some grease on the page, uh, I, I, would, I would really not like that to happen. So, hence the whole thing. Not dry. Wait. Okay, well, what you do see here is that you already get a nice difference from a fairly light red to something that's quite a bit darker. Um, I like that a lot. Um, that's dry. Let's do a little bit of water. Where's my water? Here we go. Notice how it dissolves in a little bit of orange-like um, it's, it's funny to see the, the, the color decompose, so to speak. Um, still not entirely dry. I like this. Um, clearly this ink is not going to help you a lot when you need something that's waterproof. But, you know, it'll work. While we are waiting, I think we can start working on a score card for this ink. Just leave that under there. This isn't really about the writing anymore, so... Cleaning. Well, as I said, I, I seem to remember cleaning is, is pretty easy, so I'll write down good. Bleed through. We'll have to uh, see that for ourselves a bit later on. Color. Well, I would say that is undeniably red. Shading. There is some nice... This is a ballpoint user at my door. This, this happens all the time. The dogs go off. Um, there is shading. But I've seen better inks. There is some. So I'll just write down OK. Um, but this is not an ink you should get when you, you, know, you, you want something that has huge amounts of, of shading to it. Um, I think you might be better off with Gerbain 1670 for that. Shading is okay. Flow. Well, in all honesty, I can only say flow is excellent. Um, I haven't had any hard starts, as far as I can remember, which I do have with other reds. Maybe the only times I had that was in, in very cheap Chinese pens, but you know, they have that with any ink you use, so I think it's a very high quality ink. Uh, feathering. I don't seem to remember that is a particularly big issue, definitely not in this paper, but we'll do copier paper later on. Um, this is still wet, what about this? No, that's good, okay. Let's, let's have a look at that right now. It takes quite a long time to dry. There we go. Third pass. So here I think, even though it's not entirely dry, you see this very intense 
red. Uh, I, I think that that's a very beautiful, uh, yeah, <laughs> intense red. I, I, I really like the, the, the color of this ink. It sort of jumps at you, and I, I, I enjoy that. And especially, I mean, clearly it's a bit brighter with just one pass, but this highly saturated color, I, I really do love that. All right now, I'm going to cheat a little because this is still wet and it's going to stay wet for quite a while. So I'll just blot it. It's probably going to run a little bit. But I do want it to be dry when we put some water on that. Oh, well, that's not that bad. Okay. Well, then, let's see how that responds to water. Looks like it's going to dissolve, but we'll come back to that. I'll just grab tissue so that we can get rid of the uh, excess water later on. But for now, we were working on a score card, so I think we should finish that first. By hitting here, there we go. So we've got two more items on the score card we always discuss. One is drying time. Loops. Um, too many loops, but of course I am completely loopy, so that explains a lot. Uh, drying time. I think drying time is long. That's all I can say. And not just in, you know, flex nibs or really broad nibs. I mean, this is a medium nib. Uh, I've been talking for a bit now, and it's, it's still wet. Now, this is good paper, so it's somewhat to be expected, but still. I, I think if you need a fast drying ink, this is not it. Then we have waterproofness. Um, I think it's safe to say that that's fairly poor, but let's get rid of this water. Well, clearly the writing here is destroyed. It's it's especially in the middle. It's it's hardly visible what it you know what it was. Uh, the R is um, pretty much wiped out. So I think we can say that waterproofness is um, poor at best. And now, there's two things we have to check. I just tore the paper in half. Interesting. Um, we'll put that back together somehow with our FB Geeks magic. In any case, look at, look at this. Um, I do really like it. This is, I think it's dry now. Yeah, it's, it's pretty dry. Um, a lot of saturation there. Very dark, deep red. A much, you know, I, well, much, at least a lighter red there. Um, I think it's, it's very fascinating. I love this ink. Now, as to bleed through, <laughs> this half of the page, uh, almost nothing except for that part, but I mean, that is three passes with a six millimeter nib. I mean, that's going to bleed through on pretty much any paper, any ink. Um, this side of the paper... <laughs> this is kind of sad. Um, and this half of the paper, no bleed through. So, bleed through looks pretty good on Rhodia paper. But now we have to take a look at some copier paper. Here we got some copier paper, which I'll just tear in half straight away, so that I won't do it accidentally later on. Um, and here we go again. So we start off with a fine nib. Don't see a whole lot feathering actually, but um, grabbing a loop. That is a magnifying glass. You see a whole lot of feathering. It's difficult to get the light right, but I actually don't. So that looks pretty good. But this is just a fine nib. When we move on to a medium nib, he said ominously. So 
it'll turn in half, right? Notice how my handwriting is deteriorating. One of the reasons is that right now I'm kind of reaching around the leg of a tripod which is resting on my desk, so this is not a class in legible handwriting. We're just talking about the ink, right? Broad. Torn in half. My love. I'm starting to see some feathering. I'm going to push this to the limits now. Let me try to put some pressure on there, a lot of ink. So of course this is pushing it to the limits. Still feathering is not that bad. Not as bad as I would expect, but we'll do some flex writing later. For now let's do a bit of uh, wet italic writing. That should be uh, a part of the Olympics. Wet italic writing. That's Olympic rings drawn too quickly. Alright. I don't see sorry, a whole lot of feathering there either. That looks pretty impressive. I didn't expect that, actually. Let's uh, let's put this to the test on the other half of the paper. Yeah, it's probably annoying the orange, isn't it? I'll, 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 I'll stick the parts together. Um, flex. Opa Gangnam style. That doesn't mean anything to you? You put that into YouTube and you're in for some very interesting choreography. Make sure you find the original video clip by Psy. Okay. Well, there's feathering there. But let's be fair. This is insane writing, right? I mean, this is really really fat writing, a lot of ink, uh, cheap paper, nothing happened on the Rhodia paper, but I mean seriously, this is a broad italic, this is a broad nib. You see feathering there, in the word feathering, um, how ironic, uh, but that is because, uh, you know, that's a lot of ink. In regular writing, there is maybe a little bit of feathering, but it's it's really not that pronounced. So I'm I'm pleasantly surprised by that, especially on this paper. Now the big test we've got is the six millimeter nib, right? Hmm, this is turning into a very strange S. What do I do with this? I have no idea which kind of script this is. It's gothic with a twist. That's Old English. Well, let's just add a, an unseal A, just for fun. And we got that. And then maybe, uh, oh, I don't know. some uh, foundational. There we go. Let's have a look at that. I'm going to squash it into the paper. 
That weird stuff is just for my blotting paper. I need a new sheet. But even so, I would say feathering is not that bad. Now, of course, I blotted it. Let's push this to the max. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Paper is destroyed. See the paper? Disgusting. But, I don't see a whole lot of feathering. I'll just try to squeeze out a drop of ink here. How useful these aerometric converters. Sometimes they come in handy. Um, well, there's some... Uh, still not a whole lot of feathering. Okay, well, I think we have proven quite conclusively that this ink does not feather extremely. I, I really didn't expect that, but that's awesome. I really tried to push it, tried to see what I could do. Oh, that's disgusting. Now it's just, like there's blood in my notepad. Um, Feather, sorry, bleed through is um, is there, um, but again, mostly in extremely pronounced uh, writing with a lot of ink, flex writing, etc. Um, so, this notepad, you know, I, I don't have any notepads that have a cover that is this busted, and the only reason for this is the encyclopedia. I always use that as a, you know, as a thing to, to put under the paper. Uh, where are my other two halves of paper? Here we go. Um, I had to write down one more thing in the scorecard. Two things. Feathering, well I'd say feathering is good. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, bleed through is, well, I'd say okay to good. I mean, I think it's pretty impressive. So, there you have it. Akamon, Chinatown Red, nice ink. I'm afraid for many viewers this will not be the easiest to obtain ink, but you know, shipping will be. Let's put it this way you'll pay for some shipping. You order a bottle like this, but you get 150 milliliters of ink, and you get an extremely cool bottle, um, which you can refill with other inks if, you've, if you think that's necessary. Um, so I think it's cool. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.